Thanks for coming back to Arithmetic with Ron. Today we're going to talk about long division and what happens when you're trying to divide numbers but it's outside of your multiplication range. That's where long division can help. Join me today and we'll learn how to do it together. Thanks again. Let's begin today's lesson with a quick review on what division is in the first place. What I have here are six chocolate chip cookies and what I want to do is give that one an extra chip. Let's uh, share these chocolate chip cookies among three friends, okay? And I want to divide them equally. Well, what I can do is give two to this friend, and I can give two to this one, and the last two can go over here, okay? What I've done is I have taken six, and I have divided it into three groups, which means that there are two cookies in every group. This is a simple division problem, and what we want to see is that if you read this backwards, a division problem read backwards is actually multiplication. So for simple division problems with whole numbers, we can actually see that a multiplication knowledge, if you know your times tables, let's go ahead and read this backwards, 20, and then 5, and then 4. Look at this, 20 divided by five equals four, okay? So simple division with whole numbers where you know your times tables, we don't really need long division. And so what I recommend to people is that if you know your times tables up through 15, so one times one, two times two, two times eight, two times 15, all the way up through 15 times 15, then when you run into problems like, um, let's see here, when you run into problems like uh, 60 divided by 15 is what? Well, you can spin that around and say what times 15 is 60. And if you know your times tables, you'll look at that and say this must be 4. So if this is 4, 4 times 15 is 60, then 60 divided by 15 is 4. Okay? So knowing your times tables is going to be helpful with dividing simple numbers. But now, what happens if I do something like this? 85 divided by five, okay? Well, this is gonna be outside of what most people do for their multiplication tables. And so we need a way to figure out how to break this up since reading it backwards, five something times five equals 85. And this is gonna be outside the 15 by 15 multiples. If you wanna learn past 15, you can, but a lot of people don't, and that's okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this into a long division problem. And a long division problem, if you start with this division, what it's gonna look like is this. 85 divided by five is going to equal something, okay? And the way we label this, this is called our dividend, this is called our divisor, and the answer is called the quotient, okay? So what we're gonna do today is talk about how do I actually solve this? And what we're gonna ask ourselves is the question, how many times? Okay, we're gonna use this a lot. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, how many times does five fit into eight? Okay, it fits in once because two fives would be 10 and that's too much. But one five can fit in there. Now I multiply these and I say that one five can fit into eight and that would be five. And now if I subtract these, I have three left over. So what I'm saying here is that a five can fit into eight and then there would be three parts left over. Now what I'm gonna do is carry down the next number, like so, and I'm gonna ask that same question. How many times does five fit into 35? You can answer this by thinking about your multiplication tables, and we know that five times seven is 35, so it fits in seven times. Five times seven is 35. When we subtract, we have nothing left over, okay? That means that we're done. And the answer is 17. 
85 divided by 5 is 17. Let's go ahead and look at another example that has numbers a little bit bigger, and we'll see what we do. Let's take 144, and we're going to divide it by 6. Let's ask the same question. How many times can 6 fit into 1? Well, it doesn't. 6 doesn't fit into 1. If you had 6 gallons of water, you can't fit it into a 1-gallon bucket. So we put a 0, and we multiply. 6 times 0 is 0, and we subtract. And 1 minus 0 is 1, and we bring down the next number. Okay, And we ask, how many times does 6 fit into 14? Well, one of them is 6, two of them is 12, three of them is 18. That's too much. We can't have 18. So we're going to go 2. Two 6s can fit into 14. And if you multiply these, 6 times 2 is 12. Let's see what we have left over. We have 2. Now we're going to bring down the last number. And we get how many times does 6 fit into 24? The answer is 4. 6 times 4 is 24, and when we subtract, we have nothing left over, okay? So our final answer is 24. And by the way, this zero out front does not change the value of the number. It's a placeholder. So we know that 24 is our final answer. Let's look at one last example with numbers that are even a little bit bigger, and we're going to take the number 1,000. 197, and we're going to divide it by 9. That is a terrible looking 9. Let's fix that. See if we can do a little better there. 9, okay? So we're going to ask, how many times does 9 fit into the number 1? It doesn't. You can't take 9 of something and fit it into something that's meant for only 1. 9 times 0 is 0. Let's subtract, and we get 1. Now we're going to bring down the next digit, okay? Can 9 fit into 11? It surely can. It's going to go in once. 9 times 1 is 9. We subtract. We get 2 left over because 11 minus 9 is equal to 2. And now we're going to bring down the next digit. We have 29. And 9 can fit into 29 three times because 9 times 3 is 27. When I subtract, I get 2 left over, and I bring down the next and last digit. Look at this. We already know that 9 goes into 27 three times, and when we do our subtraction, we are left with nothing. That means that we're done, and the answer to 1197 divided by 9 is just 133. Again, the zero out front is just a placeholder, and it's very important that we keep these digits in line with the numbers in our dividend. So these numbers are in the ones place, these are in the tens, these are in the hundreds, these are in the thousands. There is no value in the thousands place, which is why we can just write 133. So today we saw how long division helps when you're trying to divide large numbers into smaller groups. Go ahead and hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time.